Well, it did happen. The palette that everybody went gaga for, the Natasha Denona Glam Palette, Alter Ego has come out with their version or a dupe of it, and it's called Shadow Kiss. And we are going to be doing this look. Can you tell which side is which? I probably already gave it away by going like this. But we're going to be doing this look, very simple, very easy, and it, to achieve this. And you're going to get to see swatches of all of these two. Let's get into that video and find out whether this is a good enough dupe to dupe Natasha Denona. Hello friends! This is a fun video because we are going to be taking this glam palette from Natasha Denona, which everybody has seen and gone crazy for. And this is the new Shadow Kiss from Alter Ego palette that they just barely came out with. I think it was last week. They were kind enough to send this to me. I was so excited because I did buy the Natasha Denona one and I wanted to see if this would be a dupe. And the colors are so pretty. So let me hold these two up so you can see that what those two look like together and sorry about any glare that's on there there that might be whoops there that might be a little bit better on the glare they are so very close to each other what i'm going to do today is we're going to start off by doing this eye look i have all my other makeup done but we're going to do this eye look and then i will go into the swatches for you guys so that you can see them side by side spoiler alert I already love Alter Ego, so I probably am going to love this one. Let's get into the video so you can see me do this look and find out if this is a good enough dupe for Natasha Denona. I think I'm going to try and keep this look fairly uncomplicated as I possibly can. So we're going to work with the Natasha Denona on this side right here. And I am going to start with this very just kind of a cool toned, almost like a gray color. And I'm using the Zoeva 228. It's really fluffy. And um, I'm just going to put this as my transition color. I always forget to do this before I get started on my eye look. So I want to just use this brow pencil from Benefit and I just trace in the brows and then I will just lightly blend that together so that there's a lot of light up there. And then I'm going to put this in the inner corner down here. That brings a ton of light to the area. And oh, by the way, I do have a primer on that is from Anastasi Beverly Hills. My you guys know that that's nothing new for me. Okay, let's try this again. We are going to do a little bit more on that trans transition color. And I am just bringing that all over about two thirds of the way up to the brow bone there. With the Natasha Denona palette, there is a bit of fallout. Make sure you tap off your brush pretty good. Now, by the way, so you know that I'm not going to get these colors mixed on either side. I clean this off with just a damp microfiber um, rag that I keep in my lap. So yeah, I'm not getting the same color on the other side. Now the, the equivalent to that is right here, this color right here, which is called Risk, and that's in the Alter Ego palette. So we're gonna go into that and dip into that and see how its fallout is. Lots of fallout on it too, so that's to be expected. We're not gonna worry about that too much. Color is very, very similar. Um, I don't think that you could tell the difference no matter what. I would say that this feels just a tiny bit more powdery, not a lot. As far as the texture of the two of them, it's building up very nicely, almost exactly like the Natasha Denona did. So really, I don't think that even at this point you can see a difference whatsoever. Very, very similar feel with the brush. And then I'm going to take this little angled uh, eyeshadow brush from BK Beauty. This is the 205. And I'm going to go down into this color right here which is kind of a light gray with shimmer in it. I don't normally like that, but I don't want this look to get too dark on me right now. So I'm just going to stick with this color for a little bit and try to do this outer third of my eyeshadow on the lid. This particular one in this pan does not have any fallout whatsoever, so you know that. All 
all right cleaning off that brush really well again and we will go into the shadow kiss palette and we will use the equivalent to it which is right over to here and we will see how it stacks up no fallout on that one either in case you're new with me and you have never been a part of my channel before i have a palsy that is in my hands that makes me shake so if you're seeing me shake and you're thinking oh my goodness she's really nervous or there's something majorly wrong with her i just have a disability that i work with it is an it's called an essential tremor it is something that I will have for my whole life, have had my whole life, and I just work around it, but nothing to worry about. Okay, that shadow is building up exactly the same as the Natasha Denona did. It might even be a little bit more saturated and a little bit more um, just easier to blend. So I'm really enjoying that. So pretty really like that how that is coming together so far as you can tell from the natasha denona palette i love this color right here but i think that i'm gonna put a silver on my lid today and because in my last video i showed you this fun little product called the next multitasking mixing medium i am going to use this today and demonstrate to you how good it does you just use a teeny tiny drop on the back of your hand and then you dip your brush into your color whatever it is and you can really really load that brush up because it's not going to be that intense when it gets in the medium then go ahead and pick the medium up into the brush mix it together just a tiny bit and then i'm going to show you what that exactly does it will make this eyeshadow so bulletproof that it will be there all day now i will caution you to make sure that you kind of try to keep your eye looking down until it dries right now as i'm feeling it i can feel that it feels wet and that it does need to dry down so i am just making sure i do that but can you see how vibrant that is super vibrant okay i'm going to clean that off in my rag really good because i don't want that mixing medium to be i'm holding my eyebrows up because i want that to dry so we're going to use another drop let's use it in a different position or different location on the back of the hand and then we're going to go into the equivalent of it in the shadow kiss palette and picking a lot of that up mixing it in with the mixing medium I think I got too much mixing medium that time. You need a very, very tiny, tiny bit in order to get this to work for you. It just delivers the most pretty shadow across your eyes. And yes, both of these are almost identical as far as the color and the way that they just went on. That is so beautiful. I am in love with that. And I love how that just mixed really well with the a color that I put on the outside corner. It just mixed in really, really pretty. Okay, I am going to clean this off again. And really good because that's a darker color. And I am going to go in with that brighter light color, which is this one right here. And I'm not using any mixing medium or anything. I just want this to go into my inner corner to just brighten a little bit and then just a little bit of blending onto that color we just used with the mixing medium. I clean that off again, go into this palette, grab that color, which is the same one as the other side. These are so close. I do not think that there is really a reason for you to run out and grab the Natasha Denona palette unless you just absolutely love Natasha Denona palettes. At the price difference, it's phenomenal to me. So, you know, when you have one that is $65 and then you have one that is $16, to me that's a no-brainer, especially when they're so close in the way that they perform. Shouldn't say close, they're identical. All right, and then for my liner underneath, I wanna go in with this really light color again that I used for the transition. I'm using a pencil brush from Refer, and I'm just going to paint that across the bottom, kind of in just a, wider line not anything that i'm worried too much about as far as being precise because it's such a light color that it won't really matter cleaning the brush off again and going into the other palette okay so let me show you this mixing medium again this time we're going to do something just a little bit different i'm using an even smaller amount of it and i'm going to go into this very dark color because and this is a sigma e30 brush 
one of my favorite favorite brushes i'm tapping that off that's a matte color i am tapping it off i am going to put it into the mixing medium and i'm going to really kind of just mix a tiny bit of it because i want this to stay but i also want it to look smudgy and the other thing is i don't want it to get too dark so i'm going to use a light hand light touch and I'm just sticking right out here in the outer part. And oh my goodness, my hands are giving me fits today. But you get the gist of it. I just kind of, because I blended it a whole bunch, I took off quite a bit on the back of my hand. The mixing medium wasn't as stark, but it does still give me that definition on the outer part. And then I will try the other palette for you. And again, that dark, dark color picking up that mixing medium and tapping it off, tapping some of that color off onto my hand and then just really, really lightly in this outer corner on the bottom, putting a little tiny bit out there. I'm also going to take this teeny tiny BK Beauty brush and I obviously cannot see what it's called because it's so little anyway. It's the 208 and it's just this little itty bitty liner brush, angled liner brush. It is so tiny for precise work and I really like it for that. I'm not going to use the mixing medium because I'm going to tight line my top line, but I want to have it be a little bit diffused kind of not really as stark as when i normally line it with a black liner but i'm going to go in really tight this is going to be harder with my shaking hands so this might just have to be off a of camera if i can do it on camera you will see it right now wipe off that brush go to the other palette pick up the same color and do that tight lining on this side if you have shaky hands like i do because a lot of you say you do sometimes when you're doing something like this instead of pulling across if you just go in and tap along that lash line it kind of helps because even though my hand is bouncing around i can still tap and get it into a precise spot okay i'm going to do my mascara off of camera and i'll be right back with you so there is your finished look with two coats of mascara on I feel like these two palettes are so close. Actually, I, I feel like they nailed it completely. And I just think that for the price, you can't go wrong. Now, what I want to do is show you some swatches so that you can see the two side by side. For those of you that are new here, I am not the queen of swatches. I would love to be the queen of swatches, but I really don't do that great of a job on them. So bear with me. We're going to do the best we can here. All right, so here is our first set of swatches. On this side is the Natasha Denona, and on this side is the Alter Ego, the Shadow Kiss. So these two, very similar. I do feel like maybe that bottom one is just a little bit different. It might be catching the light because of my bone right there and my wrist. So sometimes that works to your detriment as you're trying to do these swatches, but you get the gist of how close that they really truly are. Okay, moving on to the second row in the Natasha Denona over here and then the Alter Ego over here. I will say that these two mattes right here, this kind of um, tan brown, saddle brown color, and then the darkest color, which is almost a blackened brown color. These two in the Alter Ego, I did have to swatch those twice to get them built up to where the Natasha Denona was, but that really isn't a problem once you're working with a brush, but to get it on here, it was a little bit less pigmented on those two is all. And then working off of the last row in the Natasha Denona over here, and then the Alter Ego over here, Shadow Kiss. This row is identical because we're working with all metallics in here, shimmers in here. Oddly enough, I don't know why she didn't put a few more mattes in here. Just that, you know, sometimes those shimmers are a little bit easier to manufacture and show as having a ton of payoff. But those are really, really close. I can truly say that these two palettes are identical. And when you work with them, when you're using them on a brush, whatever, they are 
so so close so i am going to say yes to this alter ego it is fantastic i love this company anyway i do have the sultry with the, the temptress one which is the dupe for the sultry palette from anastasia beverly hills and i love that one as well i don't have many of the other ones but i will probably be picking up more now that i have this one and again thank you alter ego for sending this to me i really appreciate it so that's the video for today. What did you think? Do you think that it's a good enough dupe? And what do you think about the quality of the palette? I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. I'd also like to hear if you have any of Alter Ego's other products. I wanted to try their brushes. I haven't tried those yet, but I have heard that those are good as well. So let me know all of that in the comment section below. If you have palettes, brushes, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you down below. Thank you so much for spending a part of your day with me today. I love you very much and I'll catch you all in my next video. Bye my friends.